And I mean, getting back to what you said about fear and trust as well, I think the more you try to see what is on the tip of your nose, then that starts to eliminate well, not hopefully only that. the it, it, fear that you have about you know what is to come and who you are and all that. So if I go try to look at the tip of my nose and I, I pull up a mirror, I'm not going to stay focused on the tip of my nose. I'm going to go to other aspects oh, yeah. of me that I don't like. And For sure. uh, I'm going to reinforce that internal dialogue that, that is uh, not helpful. Not helpful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so finding those individuals to put myself around that are going to tell me about the good parts of me, mm-hmm. not in a, uh, a flattering, egotistical mm-hmm. sort of way. But, but a building. Yeah. But to, to say like, hey, we're going to do this together. We got this. Look at the skills. Look at what you've accomplished. Yeah. Uh, you don't, don't let some impediment prevent you from whatever that goal is yeah. for you in your life. Very cool. So I feel like we're getting a really good window into just your personality and your overall approach. But I would love to hear you just describe in your own words your leadership style or how you think other people would describe your leadership style. Um, I I would say inclusive. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm a big believer um, because I'm a person in long-term recovery. Oftentimes in uh, mutual aid support type meetings, you do a, something called a group conscience where everyone comes together and you talk about an issue and you come up with a vote and the majority often wins. Oh, interesting. Um, the only difference in my leadership style is the ultimate responsibility of that vote comes on me. And yeah. there may be times I have to veto that vote. But I think a leader is somebody that listens more than they talk. Mm. And for me, uh, God gave me two two ears and one mouth for a reason because I oftentimes <laughs> need to shut up and listen or at least talk half as much as I listen. Um, and I, I really like to be around individuals that bring something that I don't bring mm. uh, and allow my creativity inside of my brain, especially with ADHD. I've never yeah. been diagnosed, but I'm pretty sure I have it yeah, based too. on the 14 jobs on my bio. Um, <laughs> and variety. <laughs> variety, <yes>. right. Uh, <laughs> never dull moment. It's novel, you. right? You yeah. Know, you, it helps the brain work. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. Uh, it, it affords me the opportunity to hear different perspectives and to take really good ideas and add on to them to make them even better ideas. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that doesn't remove the fact that that's their win, not mine. Yeah. And I think that's one of the core things that separates a really good leader from maybe a not so good Ooh, leader Yes, is whether I take the ownership of the accomplishment yeah. or whether I praise the accomplishment of the people in which I serve. Yes. Because yes. le- leadership is still servitude. It's yes. just being a servant to who you're leading mm-hmm. rather than uh, being an empowered entity at the top of some metaphorical or proverbial pyramid. Yes, that's a challenge. And I think another challenge of leadership is taking the hit when someone on the team makes a mistake or fails. So there's the credit side of like, who gets the credit when we win? And then there's the who takes ownership when we miss. And and I think that's that's where the the ultimate responsibility of the leader comes in. The leader should always be the one that Mm -hmm. takes the ownership of when you miss. Uh, Because ultimately everyone else is depending on you. And if you're not the one that takes it, and if you point the finger at at somebody else and say, this is their misstep, you're divorcing yourself from your ultimate responsibility of you had the decision to make. You could have went a different direction. Yeah, It's not on them that you didn't end up where you wanted to be. It's on you that you didn't end up where you wanted to be. Yeah. And if your role and responsibility truly is to serve those people and to serve others, it's it's not about you and the success that you bring to the table, but how am I best setting them up for success? And if we miss, then I failed to do that. And are we as leaders doing that? Are we setting our employees up for success? Are we helping them develop Mm-hmm. Um, every one of my employees has an individualized development plan. Oh, every I love single that. one of them. And How we, often do they? Is that like a, a cyclical process? Cyclical for you? process. Okay. We do a performance evaluation several times, but Good. we let them set their goals. We set a few goals for them, but we let yeah. them set their goals. And then we empower them to reach the goals that they want to manifest. Yeah. And I don't want to say we push them, but we do everything we can to remove the barriers that prevent them from hitting their goals. I love that. How's that worked out for you? Um, I have the best staff in the state. Yay! That's awesome. 
That's awesome. And if you think about, first of all, I love that you're focused on development because I do think that's an area that a lot of organizations will say nice to have, not a have to have. Sure. Um, And also the goal setting and giving them some of that empowerment to, because think about it. We just talked about ownership. How likely am I to achieve something that you just told me? You know, because I'm your boss and I said so, go do this versus something that I really feel committed to that I'm bought into because it's something that I recognize is an important goal to go after. I mean, it's two totally different. Well, there, and, and there's the this uh, the, there's a, a metaphor inside the counseling world and it's how do you eat an elephant? One bite, one bite at, at a time. time. Yeah. So the the idea of of proverbially putting someone down and saying that's an unrealistic goal for mm-hmm. you um, it is really saying you don't have purpose with this company. You don't have value. Rather than Ooh. I'm going to help you identify what piece of the elephant you need to bite next. Ooh, wow. I've never heard it put in that context before. Yeah. Think about the message that that sends to people. And and I think a lot of that comes from the culture and the values that you have as an organization. Mm -hmm. My organization, we're not allowed to say no. Like that's just not, it's just not, uh, no's not in our vocabulary. It may be all blank, blank, how the, are we going to do this? (laughs) But no is not. We'll figure it out. Yeah. We're going to figure it out because we're you know, we most of my uh, uh, company is people with lived experience that were probably in the worst parts of their lives, and they overcame that. Mm-hmm. So, w- what's telling me that that no is the appropriate answer, and we can't overcome this barrier that's preventing us from wherever we want to yeah. do as an organization? I love that. I think I've seen it float around social media before, but it's a saying that's something to the effect of. Uh, if you're breathing right now, then you've successfully achieved 100% of your life in sure. terms of you survived every day up until this point. And how can you apply that to this next obstacle or the next mountain that you have to climb that well, what's ahead of you? Because you already have a track record of I've survived each one of those days that are behind me. Yeah, and it, it does suggest that there's some evidence that you may be able to survive another day. Yeah. My difference is I want to empower you to thrive. I just don't want you to survive. Yes. Yeah. Um, I would imagine that given the history that you have in the kitchen and then and then your experiences now, and you mentioned being inclusive, you're recognizing it takes all kinds, right? And you're working with all kinds of different personalities. And if I think about take, combining all of that and focusing on thriving, how do you approach that? Because in my mind, I'm thinking it's, it's very different for each person. What is going to allow you to thrive might not be what allows me to thrive. So I would love to hear any t- more tactical aspects of how you go about doing that and just your style and approach. Well, as I said, there's a, it's called an individualized development plan. It's not just a development plan. It's yes, individualized it's not John's development right. plan for Laura. <laughs> right. It, it is a plan that c- considers things like learning styles. Mm-hmm. Some people learn through reading. Some mm-hmm. people learn through seeing. Yeah. Some people are kinesthetic learners, and they actually have to learn through doing. Yeah. So if I want somebody to achieve a goal, but I'm giving them the long, wrong learning style, yeah. and then I'm frustrated because they're not getting it yeah is it possible that maybe it's not about them it's about me <laughs> is and it possible that i'm just pushing my learning style yeah. on everyone else right <laughs> so it's considering like how, what do people need to be successful mm-hmm. rather than pushing them to be successful so how do i provide them the uh the empowerment that they need and, yeah. and how do i step in front of the barriers and push them out of the way yes. so they can be they can get to where they need to be. Yeah, that's amazing. I love that. And and really focusing on the individual, seeing them for who they are, what they bring to the table, and what it's going to take for them to thrive. And realizing that you may hire someone for one reason, but de- understand that their skill set is much different than the reason that you hired them for yeah. and develop the position that fits their skill set Yeah. rather than continue to try to pound a, a square peg into a round hole. Yeah, that doesn't work very well. I have an assumption that I'd like to to – run by you and that assumption is that in your organization there's likely more honest conversations than what you might have in just a podcast yeah. 
<laughs> no, I hope for that in a podcast. But like, I just think about uh, any corporation, you know, pick a team, pick a company. I, I just, I get the sense that you all have honest conversations. Maybe uh, I mean, there, there's the certainly time, but... an open door type policy. Now, yeah. uh, you know, if you hold all of my employees i think some of them would likely say that i am i'm intimidating at times it's not my intent okay but but i think that you would hear that because being coming from a kitchen it's a very blunt sort of not beating around the bush gotcha. sort of perspective gotcha um but yeah i think there's a lot of real conversation but when i go back mm -hmm. to that that aspect of values in dysfunctional family mm -hmm. um Sometimes in your family, someone's going to break a leg. And when yeah. they break a leg, they're going to go to the doctor and they're going to get a cast on and the rest of the family is going to step up and they're going to step outside their role and they're going to do the role of the dude that has the broken leg. Yeah. That's my company. Ooh. It isn't about, I can't believe your leg's broken and you can't take out the trash or you can't take What's the wrong kid. with you. Right. It, it's We're about- We're getting rid of you and getting right. a new brother. Exactly. <laughs> So, sometimes I'm sure I was that brother they wanted to get rid of. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been that brother at times, um, even the firstborns out there. <laughs> yeah, I, I think instead it is more about like, hey, we see you. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can't tell. We, we have a, a morning interdisciplinary meeting. That's how we start every day. Uh, we come together as a family because cool. uh, we kind of set our, our goals and our vision and tell each other what's going on Daily. with us. Daily. Daily. I love this. Every day. This. I love this. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've just watched faces and I'm like, that person's not all right. And that person's not all right. And, mm. you know, I could highlight them in the middle of the call, but I don't. I yeah. reach out to them and I say, how are the, you? And then they lie to me. And then I say, you realize I have a master's degree for this reason. <laughs> uh, Behavioral. <laughs> right. I look at a little bit of behavior and then mm -hmm. they tell me what is actually the problem. And it, it, it's amazing how much an employee can see value in the support of an employer that doesn't come down to what shows up on a paycheck or what shows up in a, a figurative benefits package, yeah. but more of does my employer care about me Huge. and do do they want me to have what I want in life? Yeah. Huge. Can I d dive deeper on that yeah, story absolutely. real quick? Because I think that's so interesting. Number one, I love that you noticed that, that you look for that. And I think that's a great takeaway for people listening to this because I think a lot of leaders will say, I'm not responsible for that. I'm responsible for results. I'm responsible for that person. Did you hit the target or did you not hit the target? And not, mm, I've noticed that this person's comp really disengaged from meetings for the past few days or the past few weeks. Maybe there's something going on. So that's a that's a different side of leadership. Um, and I do think as leaders, we are responsible. If we're responsible for the success and we, and for me, I want the greatest success possible for other people. So if I'm noticing that someone's not there, what's going on? But I appreciate you saying that, that acknowledging someone's not okay. I'm curious though, that when you take the step to check in, why sometimes people hesitate to share? Uh, I think it's for a variety of reasons. So the, the first is fear. Mm -hmm. uh, because I'm an employer, right? They, yeah. they don't want to show their weaknesses to yeah. their employer because being vulnerable oftentimes in life means risk. Right. Um, most of the time in recovery, though, vulnerability means growth. <laughs> and, There's so many good pearls in this conversation. Uh, I want to create an environment in which it's all right to be vulnerable. It's all right to be your authentic self. Mm -hmm. it, it's all right to not fit uh society's definition of perfection yeah but be your perfect you yeah uh, i think both of yeah. those things can be the true at the same time yeah you're not society's perfect but you're you're perfect you're perfect and, and that's all you it's really a very need comforting to be. feeling you can still be sure. perfect just your version of perfect well perfect is an illusion it's, it's a unicorn i've like heard about control. it a lot but i've never like met control. it in person <laughs> Folks, there's no control and there's no perfection. Now yes. carry on with your life. <laughs> right. Now go, Let's just get past that. Go out there and figure out how to be a leader. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now that we've given you that. <laughs> but it's so true. And and I also appreciate that about that story that 
you didn't just say, all right, yeah, I asked them, you know, I followed the manual that said I was supposed to ask them how they were doing. They said, I'm fine. I may or may not have believed them, but, you know, I had to get to that next meeting. You, you stuck with it excuse the language but my bullshit meter is way too good to to just tolerate exactly. yeah. uh like yeah that's not true yeah you could lie to yourself but yeah. it's not really going to work that well with yeah you. and i think an important subcontext of that is to have a relationship yes. i mean in order to be able to call someone out it's helpful if you have built trust with them and if absolutely you do, if they know that you care about them and their best interests uh, building rapport is what makes relationships right yeah. so why shouldn't we have rapport with the people that we're going to spend the most time with yeah absolutely. oftentimes is it, inside of employment you spend more time with them than you you do with your spouse or your it's family so true it's so true and have you seen the research where they say that your boss has a greater impact on your mental health than your therapist and or your significant other? Uh, I can believe that because the fundamental fact of our culture is that we internalize bad messaging mm -hmm. and we repulse against good messaging. Yeah. So oftentimes from a bo boss, you're looked at from a critical lens, right? Yes. Like it's an objective measurement. You yes. needed to do 20 widgets and you only did 15. You're not you're good bad. enough. Yeah. yeah. And if you did 22 widgets, you're good. Yeah. Um, but we don't internalize we're good. We only internalize when yeah. we're bad. And we oftentimes take that pain and give it to the people that we love the most, which is our spouse, so our true. children. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that's a sad state that we're in as it a country. It is. Why do we – I feel like this is like a free therapy session, John. Why <laughs> do we internalize the bad and not listen to that good? I'm so curious to hear your perspective. Well, I think it, it's multifaceted. Mm -hmm. uh, first, I think – think the behavior uh, has a payoff not to go to Pavlov's dog no but, I, no it's, you know yeah. the, the bell rings we and do, we, we start to salivate yeah. and you know attention is often looked at as a positive but in actuality attention is just attention mm -hmm. so there isn't a difference mm -hmm. between negative attention and positive attention it's do you get attention yeah so Pavlov like if a kid is acting up in class they're getting attention attention so if you can find other ways to provide attention mm. that aren't so negative, then maybe you don't look for the attention through negative behavioral patterns. Uh, for, so further good. from that, I think a lot of people have mm, distorted sense of self inside yes. of their brain. Yeah. And they buy into that internal dialogue and yeah. they don't challenge it. Yeah. And, you know, like if I did something wrong, that means I'm unworthy or I don't yeah. have value. That's yeah. not true. But oftentimes we don't say, hey, I made a huge mistake. Yeah. Uh, I'm still a really good person. Like that yeah. oftentimes is not the internal dialogue. No. It's, I'm horrible. I shouldn't have done that. They're never going to forgive me. Yeah. It's, uh, I can't believe I behaved that way. Yeah. I have so much guilt and shame. I'm not going to go back and talk to the other person and apologize. Yeah. There's just this fundamental like lack of – Yeah, it's, that it's the spiral and you get far enough down in that hole, you can't get out yourself. Yeah. And then you screw, mm -hmm. you mess around and you end up in my room uh, as a therapist where I'm trying to help you dig out of that hole. Right. Because I, I mean – and then I think you also have – everyone's got these narratives running through sure. their brains, right? And then a lot of times we look for evidence that – those are correct narratives about, you know, if we have a belief That's that, the micromanager. Yeah. The Ooh, micromanager. Keep will, going. The micromanager believes the narrative in their head. If you just do things the way that I want you to do them, everything will be all right. Despite the evidence that when it's done exactly the way they want it, it still doesn't give them the outcome that they desire. Oh, my gosh. I think people need to just, after they listen to this, reflect for a <laughs> time about... Do I do these things? Oh, and... I do. I do these things. Uh huh. You, you, and you, the, it's not about whether you do them or not. It's about whether you have self awareness and you continue continue the pattern. Yes. Or you are in delusional state and you just believe eh, it's not really <laughs> impacting the people around me. Yeah. And I don't need to alter my behavior in the hopes of altering yeah. outcome. It's not my problem. It's their problem. Mm -hmm. So, how do, do you have tips on how people can build self awareness? Or leadership awareness. Uh, spend time with themselves. I know, I know that sounds strange, 
but we are in a culture where uh it no offense it's tv or podcast or yeah. uh ele- yeah. some version of electronics phone. i mean i was born in 1980 Scrolling. i still remember when the phone was attached to the wall and if yeah. you were at the store you were actually at the store no one can get yeah, a hold of you, you until you came present. home yeah. um m- mindfulness can help this idea of being present in the moment yeah. um but I, I also think giving yourself a chance to be introspective and asking yourself like fundamental questions. What is my purpose in life? Mm-hmm. Uh, what do I want out of today? Yeah. Um, giving yourself credit when you do have an accomplishment. Yes, yeah, celebrating success. So, celebrating success and celebrating You're failure. Bad about that. If yeah. I wasn't, if I wasn't a failure, I'd, I promise you, I would have never be. I'd never be sitting in the seat because I no. learned more from failure than I ever did from. Well, success. and you wouldn't be the success that you are f- had not all of these other yes. things happened in your life. It's all a part of your story. Absolutely. In the journey, which is huge. I don't even know where to go from here. This is so good, and I've totally taken us off of our yeah. standard path. But I just, I guess I'll wrap with the question of just given that journey uh, that you've been on, maybe what's something that you have changed your mind about or, or think differently about from when you started, especially from just started working and, and maybe leading people for the first time versus where you are now? Um, that I'm trying to frame this the correct way. Uh, the amount of effort that you provide in leadership is going to equal the output. And, and let, let me reframe that. Ooh. Like as an employee, I thought if I worked 60 hours, I was a better employee than I was when I worked 40 hours. Yeah. And one of the biggest things in my leadership style that's changed in the last couple of years is I value people's time away from my company. Mm-hmm. So I used to send emails at 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 at night yeah. because they were in my head. Right. Uh, or I thought they needed to be a priority the next day or whatever yeah, Whatever yeah. my disillusioned uh, mind told me it was yeah. at that moment. And now I feel a fiduciary responsibility to model Mm. what is appropriate for my employees. So if I send the email at five o'clock or 501, when it's their time, I'm really saying to them in a value sort of way, your time isn't important. My time and the company you work for is what's important. And you're still on my time. Yeah. Whether you're clocked in or not, yeah. I, you, you need to respond and you need to do it now. So yeah. I've, I've done a really, um, fairly good job at disconnecting now <laughs> let me be honest disconnecting from requests after 5 p.m yes. for my employee doesn't that, mean it's still not <laughs> and it doesn't mean brain. i still don't write write the emails mm-hmm. but i've learned things like believe it or not outlook will hold an email and delay of delivery two, yeah delay Is delivery that not a great tool um that it's all right for me to just say something into a video note on my phone and play it the next mm-hmm. morning um that there's always going to be more problems. Yeah. So if I live in that, what's the next problem? And can I solve it today so I don't have to deal with it tomorrow? It's a yeah. fallacy. Yeah. I will stay up all night dealing with the problems. Um, it's all right to disconnect mm-hmm. and realize there's still going to be problems tomorrow. And I'll deal with those problems. At the end of that day, there'll still be problems and I'll deal with it in the next day. Yeah. Um, but disconnecting and realizing that I'm John. I'm not an executive director. Mm-hmm. I happen to be an executive director, yes. but that doesn't define happen to be who a lot of I other am. Things yeah. Too. Uh, a father, a husband, mm-hmm. a, a son, and a brother. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of things, but none of those fully encompass the genuine John. And I have to have that same respect for my employees as I do for myself. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I would say that the other big change is continuing to have self awareness. And that isn't a um it's, it's more of a puzzle than it is a a picture and, and let me reframe that mm. the more i work on self-awareness the more puzzle pieces i can put together to get a better picture of me yeah 
Uh, a lot of people think self-awareness is like a snapshot. Well, the problem with the snapshot is we're humans and we're ever changing. Yes. So if I look at the snapshot, I'm looking at what was rather than we're... what is. And yeah. I need to I have a be... little more gray hair and a little more wrinkles right. today than I did yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Or, or I, I believe, uh, you know, the, the artificial, superficial things about myself. If I yeah. take a oh, I'm overweight or I'm really tired yeah. or there's bags under my eyes or everything except for, you know, I, I love and yeah. I have capacity to be loved. Loved. I yeah. care and I have capacity to care for others. Like yeah. to me, those are much more uh, humanistic values of who I am rather than yeah. what I happen to do as a vocation. Yeah, absolutely. And and that changes because as we continue sure. to grow, it what we value and where we can get in better alignment with the things that do really matter to us, that all changes too. Well, a lot of people don't know what matters to them. I know. So we, we absorb the values of our friends or family, even if they don't align with what our core actual values are. And that's yeah. where a lot of problems come out in life. Yeah. My parent told me I'm supposed to be this way. I'm now in my 40s, but I still have this internal belief that I'm supposed to be this way. Well, no, not unless you believe you're supposed to be this way. Yeah. So maybe if we gave ourselves some time to consider what our own values were mm-hmm. and had some mm-hmm. compassion and grace for ourselves when our behaviors don't exactly align and match our values, yeah. we would be a much better society. And get whole. curious. Yeah, get, get curious. curious about who we are. Who we are, why we do the things we do, what we want, what we don't want, and all of that. And I agree. I think a lot of times there's so many distractions available to us that we don't have to take that time to Absolutely. be introspective and really ask ourselves. D- denials more than a uh, river in Egypt, right? <laughs> I'm ending it right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. What have we not talked about? I know that I sent you a list of questions and I, then I didn't ask hardly any of them, but anything that that you were hoping we would cover today that we haven't, because this has been such a fascinating conversation. Uh, not really for me. I, I, I'm one of those individuals that uh, a box doesn't, I don't fit in a box. Maybe. You can try to fit me <laughs> into a box. Me? It's not going to work. Um, so I, I didn't, boxes, John. I, I try my best to not have expectations because yeah. when I have expectations, I set myself up for failure. Mm. So when I allow it to just, just be, be open. just be. Mm. And it, so I, I, I my, my director of operations is also comes from the food service industry. He used to be a restaurant owner. And uh, we do caterings together because I like to give back to the people that are around me. And yeah. like I said, it's a little lucrative at times yeah. doing food service. I'll say, hey, we have 300 guests. Did I get enough salad? And he'll always tell me it's the perfect amount, even if it's not the perfect amount. And so if I get 20 pounds of salad mix versus 25, it doesn't matter. It's, it's the always perfect the perfect amount. amount. And I think a lot of us would, if we could give ourselves the same grace, yeah. like I did the perfect amount there. Mm-hmm. Uh, we want to, we want to live such lives of being discontent with yeah. who we are. Or and giving each on. other that grace yeah. too. Like, yes, there are some truly evil people in this world, but for the most part, I think people really are trying to do the best they can. And I am too. And do we hit the mark every day? No. no, but I don't, I really don't believe that most people wake up every morning trying to figure out how they can ruin someone else's day. True. But I also don't believe most people wake up in the morning with a driven conscious of, I want to be a slightly better person tonight when I go to sleep. And that's where I'm at. I, I'm not always going to succeed at that. Yes. But I always want to say I gave effort to leave it better than I found it. Uh, yeah. Make it better. I think you're absolutely doing that. You're a really cool person. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you. Thanks for being here today. Absolutely. You game for the lightning round? Yeah, let's go lightning round. Oh, I can't wait to hear what your answers are going to be. Okay. 60 seconds. And the timer starts now. What season best fits your personality? Uh, Fall. Okay. What's your most used emoji in text? Uh, Most used emoji... I don't really use them that much. Probably huh. like a, a cry face. Okay. Um, what book, song, movie, or podcast has had the greatest impact on your life? I don't know that any one of them perfectly fit. Okay. Too many to choose Too from, many right? to choose from. What's something about you that surprises people when they first hear it? I'm 45% covered in tattoos. Oh, my gosh. All right. Fill in the blank. <laughs> I spend too much money on... Uh, um, I'm frugal, so that's a hard question. 
Uh, I spend too much money. I feel like kitchen stuff on, is expensive. On, on takeout food. Takeout food. Pr- that's probably. Same. Uh, what celebrity would you want to play you in a movie? Somebody ridiculous. <laughs> uh, Seth Rogen. I was going to say, like, someone oh, funny. Yeah. yeah, you need a comedian. This is good. Very good. Thank you for being here. Absolutely. Today. Thank this you for having me. awesome. I want everyone to do pay attention to all the cool things that you're doing in this world. Well, uh, with with podcasts and things like that. You, yeah. That's why Give I do. Yeah, opportunity. Yeah. Very good. All right. And and I, I failed to highlight that your organization is the organization that we're donating our finish it licenses to that people, if they choose to sponsor someone, it goes to your organization, which I'm really oh, excited. You can, always th- you can always cut out something that wasn't important that I said and throw that in there. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll just add it. Bonus. Bonus. All right. Thank you, John, Thank you. So Seriously. I, I greatly appreciate it. Absolutely. That's all the time we have for today. Until next time, shine bright, everyone.